Welcome back to the channel. This is Luke from Warnerbilt, and today we're gonna to be going over outlet replacement. Before we actually just dig in and start cutting wires apart, we're gonna actually review an outlet, how you hook them out, some tips and tricks from somebody who's installed thousands of them. Yes, I've actually installed thousands of these. So stick around, you might learn something. So this is your typical residential 15 amp receptacle. Uh, this is a Leviton in a Decora shape. Decora means that it looks like a GFI. So it's got that square surface for a square opening. I understand this is the wrong color, but you get the picture. Nice thing about this is it is of a tamper resistant rating. So the tamper resistant, I believe there's like a TR stamped on somewhere. Yeah, right here. I don't know if you can see that, it says TR for tamper resistant. So what it ends up having is these blades right here that uh, help with little kids sticking stuff in there. And I believe for it to work correctly, you have to stick something in at the same time. Yeah, that's how they work. You can backstab with 15 amp wire, which is a 14 gauge solid. You can also side wire it with a J hook or a hook style wiring. You got your brass side for black. You got your white side silver for your neutral. And then you have green for ground. So there's a couple different strip gauges based off of different outlets that you buy. But your strip gauge gives you the required wiring to go inside this back stab. So you this one's actually pretty close. It's a smidge over, but let's see what happens. Yeah, you can see just a smidge over. This is an old outlet that uh, I cut out earlier. You can see I cut it out. The proper way to wire these is in a clockwise direction, starting at the nine o'clock and finishing at the three o'clock. So like a nine o'clock to a three o'clock connection, which would give you wise pattern. You can see on this one, it's backwards. We started at three o'clock and we finished at nine o'clock. That's what we don't want to do. When you tighten this type of screw up in the backwards position or the counterclockwise position, what happens is it'll actually push this wire out and it'll flare it open. So then you only really get contact right here in this pinch point. And then when the hook starts flaring, you'll get contact on that edge of this screw versus on this screw, as you tighten this down, it actually pulls the hook tighter and it will give you continuous contact all the way around the screw. There is a jumping strap that's built into these outlets. You have one on the hot side. You also have one on the neutral side. Primarily, when you're taking apart your outlets, if you see the hot side strap broken out, it's going to mean that typically you have a switched outlet. So what, what they're doing is they'll have a hot typically on the bottom and then you'll put your switched outlet on the top. We almost never run into a situation where the neutral is broke out as far as house wiring. The neutral should almost never be broke out. And I'll give you an example of when it would be. This one was broke out and this one was broke out. There's only one combination that you can have that happen. And it's if there was actually two circuits on the not sharing a neutral. So you'd have probably a black here and a white here that only operates this side of this outlet. And then you'd have possibly a black or a red and a white that would operate this side. So with that being said, if this one's broke out and this one's broke out, that means that you would have two breakers you'd have to shut off. A couple of features that you notice these two outlets, even though they physically look the same, as I busted off these tabs, only these feet on the top and bottom of this outlet. Now, why did I bust those out? 
And this is what drives me nuts that you can tell an electrician from a non-electrician. Using old work boxes, okay? Notice the gap between where the screw goes in in the center and the strap that you actually attach to be flush mounted. I call that 3 16 So for the purpose of this, I'm gonna cut these all off like I'm showing you like we're gonna install this. Let's pretend these wires are hooked up and we're gonna be putting this into a box. If you were to put this one in the box with these feet on, and you set this in here, it wouldn't end up being flush. What happens, see how that sits down in there ever so slightly? If you were to leave the tabs on, when you pull this down in with the screws, it flares those legs upward so that when you put your cover on, it actually keeps your cover sticking out. And it just looks like a really sloppy job. The other thing with Decora outlets, especially Decora, this will happen with your standard circle looking outlets too, but with a Decora outlet, you definitely have a definitive flat edge for a long portion of the outlet on the tops and on the sides. So when you're putting this, screwing this into this box, if you have this clocked at any certain angle that's not flat, it's definitely gonna show up in your cover against the wall that's not squared. So just keep that in mind when you're putting these guys in there, you kind of help it get in and keep toggling it back and forth until it gets nice and square. Granted, this is a metal box. You're probably gonna be putting it into a plastic one so you don't have to worry about stuff touching, but this was just to show you that it drives me nuts. People don't break those tabs off because on a plastic one, it'll be the same way. Always take those tabs off when you're doing it. It just gives you a lot cleaner look. One more thing to note. I only have 15 amp wire out here, which is 14 gauge. Um, you'll only be able to get 14 gauge in a backstab if you so choose to backstab your outlet. Like I said, today we're not. We're going to side wire it but a 14 gauge will only fit in the back. And the reason why that is, is because a 15 amp outlet. So they don't want a 20 gauge wire to go in here. This is a 15 amp outlet, but if you side wire 20 amp wire on here, this outlet's technically rated for 20 amp pass through, meaning that it'll allow 20 amps to pass from one side through another and continue on with the circuit. All right. So now we're gonna dig into it. Safety first. If this is the only thing that you learned from this video today is to shut the power off, perfect. This screwdriver is fun. I call it my whoopee. Some people leave outlet covers on when they paint and I highly recommend scribing a line with a knife real lightly all the way around or else when you try to pull this cover off you're going to peel your paint and it's going to look like crap you can also tap them just to loosen them up so that they don't screw your paint up now i haven't shut the power off yet that was holding on a little bit i haven't shut the power off yet because i want to see this uh non-contact voltage tester is new to me so these are a good reference um i don't know if i so much trust them like i do something that actually plugs in and lights up you can do what you want as long as you're testing it i'm happy with that but you know safety is uh number one like i was talking about painting Looks like this outlet's not uh, touching that great. I can show you a trick for that. Um, a lot of people take the covers off and they will paint. And over time, changing colors, you can see there's been like a dark color on here, light color. Now there's this gray color. It'll create a paint uh, coverage. I don't even know what you would call it. 
but uh, that's something that you're going to want to cut off because, again, that's going to definitely peel back on the drywall and it's going to look like crap. All we want to do is change the outlet. We don't want to create a bunch of drywall patching. So we're going to go kill the power. So off camera, I went down and shut the breaker off. So obviously these two green lights are dead. Um, Non-contact voltage tester, still saying it's dead. But I trust this more than anything because it actually has to turn lights on connected to the plug on the inside. One thing that a lot of DIY guys don't tell you is yes, earlier this was working and it had green lights. And then after I shut the breaker off, I came up here and the green lights were gone. The best thing to do is confirm the meter by testing it in a known working outlet. So we're gonna go do that real quick. All right, so off site, I tested this in the bathroom and uh, it told me it was good. So I'm trusting that this is actually dead. Remember I told you earlier, you wanna try to cut back any paint lines, just score it. Doesn't have to be crazy because these, and trust me, I've done these thousands and thousands of these and drywaller is expensive. So what do we got here? Oh, super easy. It's just a two wire, meaning that all we have in there is a two wire going into the box, nothing in and out. So this is actually really, really easy. Let's pretend these were side wired. We're just gonna cut them off. Super easy, right? Super, super easy. And now we are gonna be hooking up our new tamper resistant Leviton outlet, non-sponsored, but I love this brand. Made in the USA, by the way, so you're getting quality. Roughly three quarters of an inch. You're gonna hook them. I'm right-handed, so hooking up makes it turn in the clockwise direction already for you. So if you're right-handed, a lot of guys I see will do this. They'll grab it and then they go down. This is just awkward even and then around, but then the orientation of the wire ends up being in the wrong position. And then that would kind of force you put it in the incorrect position or the counterclockwise position. Because remember we said we wanted to go from the nine o'clock position to the three o'clock position, kind of like banker's hours, except for a little bit less than banker's hours. Now, I highly recommend if you are new to doing this, to not use a power tool to put them in because you can't gauge the torque factor that you're putting into the screw. I've been doing this for a long, long time and yes, I use power tools, but notice, let's see if we get this on camera. As I'm tightening it, it's gonna pull that white wire to your right See how that's doing that? It's because the clockwise rotation, it pulls it in and tightens it down. Also, I don't know about anybody else. Maybe there's other DIYers or electricians out there, but I've always used a flat tip screwdriver to tighten these up. I know they make a Phillips type screwdriver that will tighten these better, but I've never used one. I don't even think they made them when I was doing all this. Our last one, again, nine o'clock is on the bottom. We're finishing at the three o'clock. I always hold my thumb with pressure going this way to maintain the wire in location. Um, again, I know this is tough camera wise, but you can actually see that wire pull down and then pull itself in. Let's see if I can kind of get that in there. How oh, it pulled itself in to itself. I 
And then now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pre-memory the wires because I wanna try to make it flat, right? We were talking about that flatness. I don't know if you noticed, but when we took this apart, it was a little bit tipped to our right. That's because the drywaller overcut and these guys barely grabbed that. So to fix that, I'll show you a trick. All right, I'm gonna have to go run and get my uh, nine inch linesman. So to try to help that, what you're gonna wanna do is take these guys and bend them back a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. And that'll help with it sticking flush. I usually run those in just so that they're not sticking out as a requirement. No. Somebody tell you, oh yeah, you have to do it, and you don't have to do it. Just start the top one. You don't want to pull that all the way in because this will be flexed out and then you're going to bend those upper tabs. And then you can pull it in, kind of feel with your thumb once you get flush. And that's pretty much it. Now you have a tamper resistant 15 amp residential outlet. One thing I do is this was breaker number nine. So on the inside of the outlet, I'll just go number nine and I'll put a line under it to show that it's not number six. But just a little trick because then if you ever got to shut this off, you kind of know where it is. But you don't want to always trust it either. If you didn't write it on there, you never know. It could have get moved around. And you just throw a cover on. I always run with the screws vertical. You can see a little bit of a color variation. This is light almond. They both are light almond, but manufacturers and their colors are a little bit different. Notice how in the fluke meter, I got two green lights. That means it's wired correctly and the power is on. Um, I hope you enjoyed is... watching the video. This is Luke from Warnerbilt. Stick around. You might learn something.